Good morning, folks out there in the land of internets, interwebs, mouse clicks, all kinds of great places that were out there across the land along this great United States of America and throughout the world, actually, because we have people on No Finish Line Nation now that we've talked to from England all the way down to Australia, all kinds of places. So, uh, hello, it is a Monday. It is July the 31st, 2017, and I'm going to do things a little bit differently today. It's just going to be kind of a, I don't know, impromptu, really quick way of being able to connect with some of the users that are out there and some of the people that are following me in my journey and where we're at with the podcast and where we're at with the upcoming uh, Bropocalypse 2017 coming up in Boston, Massachusetts. So, what I'm going to do is I actually asked all the users or everybody that was out there if they wanted to ask some specific questions to some of the panelist members or just people in general that I'm going to be doing some interviews with while we're down there at the Bropocalypse. I'm going to have a whole setup going on with my microphones here and I'm going to have another microphone going with the other person and we're just going to ask some impromptu questions, some some real talk, some real good conversations, some reflections, some celebrations and different stuff like that. So that's the plan while I'm down there outside of all the festivities that might be going on for the Bropocalypse, but uh, that's kind of the direction we'd like to be able to go with here with the podcast so then I can record those and I can use them throughout the next few months or so as we carry on and as we are uh, using them as some good material, uh, as things that we shared with each other or that we learned from each other or everything. So if you are still interested of doing that, You can still email me questions at liquidshano1973 at gmail.com. You can go ahead and get that information right over to me with a question. If it's a specific question that you want to ask a specific panelist member, somebody like maybe like a Heidi or a Jonathan Mud Hustler or Kelly or Lisa Allison or anybody, JP, uh, Marianne, Spinwich, anybody, anybody that's on there that you have followed, that you were inspired by, on our Connect platform and know that are going to be at this uh, Propocalypse event that we're having here in Boston, send me the question. Send me exactly what you want to ask them and then I can go ahead and ask them on our a little interview. And some of it will be great because I can actually just bring the question to the interview without them really even knowing, so no prepared or anything like that. It's just really honest talk and, and we'll go ahead and put it uh, out on the air for everybody to hear. Now, a little history that I wanted to go over real quick. Some people were asking on No Finish Line Nation, which is our our Facebook page, was asking what Ropocalypse 2017 was all about. So they know it's like kind of like a meetup, as people are calling them, or they know there is a place where people can go to to um, see a connection made by people. And I'll give you a little history of it, right? So last year, in 2016... Five of us all met down in Boston. Okay, so we had that most of the admins of uh, No Finish Line Nation, and we had uh, a couple other people that were there on the panel that was brought into Saugus, Massachusetts. So we had, I think we had a panel of I don't know, like eight or nine people, and we were there, and it was kind of low key, but it was uh, you know we still packed out house because Saugus has a really good meeting down there with an amazing leader uh, that runs the show down there. And so it really just became organic. And then we, as a uh, team of a few of us, all went out downtown Boston and then went over to Salem, Massachusetts and just kind of like experienced the city. I know that uh, Mud Hustler, Jonathan, and myself were from the area. So it wasn't anything really new to us, but it was new in connecting with people that really meant something to us and that all of us are on the same journey together. So this year we put out the message that we're going to do it again. And wow, the response that we've gotten. Well, we are now at capacity pretty much for the building where we have to come in to try to find secondary parking. And then there's also uh, a Facebook live feed on the leader of Saugus's Facebook page. So if you haven't got that material just yet, do me a favor on No Finish Line Nation. Go on there and find uh, my post. And there's a couple other people that have posted the link to Jill's um, wait page that she has in Saugus 
and she's going to put the link to the Facebook Live. You have to like her page, and then you can go ahead and go on the Facebook Live. It's the only place we're going to have the Facebook Live while it's going, but we'll see what we can do for any kind of uh, re-airing or recordings or anything like that that we can get out to everybody. So so that's kind of the history behind the Bropocalypse. Now, it's great because anybody that doesn't or isn't in the know or isn't following Weight Watchers like a lot of the folks are that are at the Bropocalypse it's just a great way of people connecting. And I know we talk a lot about building your tribe and getting people that you are focused on the same things with and you guys are in the same game plan and you're fighting the same fight and you're the same warrior outfits you're putting on and all the good stuff. Well, here's the thing. That's all it's about. All it's about is finding people that you can really lean in on to help hold you accountable, to celebrate with each other, to give hugs to, to lift up when they need it. And then also, to be quite honest with you, because I get kind of flighty sometimes, I also need somebody to knock me down a couple pegs every once in a while. That's what the tribe does. And so it's going to be great to be able to connect with everybody this year. It's going to be quite overwhelming because of the amount of people that are coming from all over the country. But look out for it. You'll see posts on No Finish Line Nation. You'll see me doing some blog posts here or some um, podcast posts here, and I'll be writing about it on the blog. So again, if you want specific questions for specific people, or how about, let's say you're not even on Weight Watchers, or you're on your own plan, or you're doing some sort of workout regimen if you're on No Finish Line Nation, or if you're just a person that just is trying to get healthy and, and lean in on me here with this podcast to be able to uh, have healthy behaviors and be able to move forward, uh, if you have questions for people that have been successful, people that have hit lifetime, people that are that are living it every single day and they're really just focused on trying to make sure that they're healthy for the rest of their lives. And it's a great way to be able to connect with new people. So send those emails, those questions, again, to liquidshano1973 at gmail.com. And I'll go ahead and continue to compile those questions. I got about 30 to 35 emails already with some great questions and we can get those even more. We can have even more questions to be able to uh, ask some of our esteemed panel, panel members and then also maybe even some others that are outside the panel that would that have been successful, that are inspirational, just as inspirational, that are coming from out of town, that are here connecting and, and meeting each other and being able to move that forward. Okay, so what I wanted to do now is I wanted to read a couple of them that resonated with me to talk about right now. So this is just my moment, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to be able to ask some of these questions to our, our people as we're in Boston but I want to share with you some of my thoughts on a couple of the emails that have come in. So I hope you can just kind of give me a little bit of time here to be able to do this because I think it'll be kind of fun. So so the first email that I got comes in from LTR67 at AOL.com. And she asks, my first question is how you stay motivated after the initial loss that you might have. I was so gung-ho for the first few months. I've now lost 30 pounds, but it's coming off so slowly now. And I know I'm not quite as focused and diligent as I was in the beginning. I'm dragging, wondering if it will even come off and somewhat discouraged. What do you do? Okay, so let me give you my thoughts here. So me personally, in my journey, I've been, an, I was an online user, an online Weight Watcher for years. I've been, I've been with Weight Watchers and then off Weight Watchers and then back to it. Or I've been just online programs. So I did all online tools. I use Connect. I use all kinds of different things, right? So the tracking and those kind of things was done through my app on my phone and everything was good to go. And so I lost a pretty good amount of weight all the way through. And so I hit about the 100 pound mark and I wanted to be able to set my goal weight. So I went to my doctor and we discussed what a goal weight for me is a six foot three large framed man what it would be healthy wise. So we did, we came up with a goal weight and I went to the Weight Watchers Center and I signed up because I knew I can continue to work for a lifetime and be able to move forward in setting a goal weight. Well, here's the interesting thing is I'm still at that 100 pounds. I've been now in my, I think it's the 12th straight meeting. So that is basically 12 meetings, which is three months, three months worth of meetings that I've been to. And guess what? I'm still at that 100 pound mark. Now, I was at the 100-pound mark before last year at the Bropocalypse. So I've maintained for uh, about a year at the same weight, right across the board, 100 pounds lost. Now, I can easily take that and go, well, I'm not going to hit towards that goal. I'm not going to, you know, I'm, I'm just maintaining. I'm learning all the skills to be lifetime and learning how to be able to make this a longevity kind of effort. But here's the thing. You can easily get frustrated. 
So LTR67 at AOL.com asked the question of she now lost 30 pounds, but it coming off, it's coming off very slowly. And although, and here's the key words that she used, I'm not as quite as focused and diligent as I was at the beginning. How many of us have gone through the fact that it becomes tiresome? How many of us have gone through the fact that the brain starts playing games and we literally don't want to do it anymore? We're just like, oh my, I just don't want to count another point. I don't want to look at another calorie. I don't want to, I don't want to have to put this weight gain regimen. Like if I'm, if I'm lifting weights at the gym and I don't want to have to religiously go through the five days or four days a week that I'm hitting the gym or I don't want to have to focus on that time anymore that I'm getting my run in or I'm getting my walk in. No more. I don't want to do it anymore. How many of you hit that? I know I've hit that wall many times in my life. Well, here's the key. For me, the only thing that works for me is I have to have my whys close. I have to have them close by, on the ready for me to remind myself of why I'm doing what I'm doing. So quite frankly, if I'm getting discouraged or I'm getting that whole feeling of I'm snail's pace, I'm creeping along, I'm turtling, all the terms that we've heard, I literally have to look back at the fact that, yes, I have maintained for the last year or so, and I'm still not at goal, but guess what? I'm still, I've still maintained for the last year, and I feel healthier, I feel stronger, and you know what, quite frankly, that why is so important to me that this is something I have to do for the rest of my life, so maintaining and going at a slower pace, in my mind, because I've done the fad diets, I've done the low carbs, I've done the, the ones where you starve yourself, and then you put that weight right back on in no time, so I've been there. And I know exactly what you're talking about because it can get really, really frustrating to be able to just keep digging at it and keep on going to that snail's pace. So first, LTR67 at AOL.com. I just wanted to say thank you so much for your email. You had a second half to that question also, but I'm going to be bringing that down to the Bropocalypse with me because it was more so focused around people that have actually met goal so I'll read that second piece when we get there, and we'll make sure that you get the second part of your answer uh, question answered also. And then I'll ask others exactly what you were um, bringing up to me just now, so that way we can uh, kind of move it all the way through. Let's see. So second one that I've got here, that another question that I had come in through the email that I loved, all, all the great feedback that I had gotten that was there. So one of the questions was, what is something you are surprised that you learned during this process? I think for me, my surprise that I learned during this process, oh, actually, this email is from uh, frisbn at gmail.com. And she asked that question, what is something that you're surprised that you learned during this process? And I'll tell you I, what, I've, what I've been very surprised about this time through with my journey is my patience. I'm very surprised because my monkey, my mental monkeys get in the way. The moths get fluttering in the head. The impatience starts happening. I start beating myself up over everything. And my in the past, I've slidden many, many times off the, the grid because I, was just, I wasn't patient enough with myself. This time through, just like I just shared on, my la on the last emailer, I, I, literally, it's been a year that I've been sitting at 100 pounds lost. Now you would think 100 pounds, that's an amazing achievement, right? But in the, again, the mind game, the mental monkeys that happen, I literally would get frustrated. And that's when in the past I would slide right off the radar and I'd be done. I'd beat myself up. I wouldn't, I wouldn't like be engaged with anything that I'm doing. And to be quite honest, it just, it always fell short. I always fell short. Now I haven't been the lowest, this lowest, of weight in a long time since high school, but I've stayed at this same weight. So it's interesting because a lot of the people's pictures from the last bro apocalypse in 2016, like Kelly or different folks, they, they, they just look, they look so much different in their photos. Well, I don't. And to me, I've maintained the entire time. Now, is that a victory or is that just maintaining and kind of going through the motions? Well, I'll be honest with you. I think there are times that we all get tired and there are times that I've slipped in some of the tracking and some of the things that I know what works and where we're at with everything. But for me, the really important piece to it is, is that my patience is something that I've never had before in my weight loss, ever, never had it. 
because I've always just wanted to get there. That's why I did the fad diets. That's why I did all the things to try to shave off the weight as quick as I can. And I know one of the reasons why we started No Finish Line Nation, our Facebook page, is because I knew that it, there is no finish line. This doesn't just go away. If I hit my goal, great. It doesn't just then I'm done. It This is work. I'm a food addict. It's I'm somebody who likes to eat food. And for me, I use food as a crutch. I use food as a mental crutch. I use it as a, a bridge to be able to cope with reality and cope with depression or you know whatever kind of stressful situation. So for me, I have to be prepared for the rest of my life to continue to work every single day. There is no finish line nation, right? That's why we started it. There is no finish line for us. We got to keep driving it. And you know what? If I if it's going to take a lot longer and my patience that I've gained over the last year, year and a half is going to be what I have for the rest of my life, then so be it. Let's keep on working the plan, working the program, stop comparing yourself to others and just do what it takes for you to keep going. I think that's really the biggest thing that's been a eye opener and a wake up call for myself, okay? So actually, uh, frisbeen at gmail.com actually asked a few other questions too. One of the other things that I really loved here, and I want to put this on here, is because there was about seven questions or six questions that she asked, and we're going to ask some of the other uh, panelist members when we get to Boston, some of the other questions. But here's one of the things that I love, and I just want to talk about for a second, is what inspires you? You know... We talk about inspiration a lot of times, and you can easily go down the road of saying somebody that's in a high visibility position, like a religious figure or somebody that does volunteering efforts or things like that can be inspirational to you. Or if you're a religious person, you might think God is inspirational or whatever else is there. You have all of these different things that are inspirational to you. And I'll tell you who ins- or what or who inspires me. There's two things. One of them is the inspiration that my wife gives me now there are a lot of people out there that are that are tribes of one right and they just kind of keep trucking through and they utilize no finish line nation connect all of the relationships we built here as a as part of their tribe well my number one tribe is me but my number two tribe out of all the other people that i've connected with all the admins from no finish line nation or anything or all the people that i've made and made great friendships with my only person that I know is with me through thick and through thin, no matter what, is my wife. She's been there. She's been on her own journey. I could give you all kinds of stories about how she also struggled with her own demons of things that she was trying to fight through. And she is a champion. She runs half marathons. She actually uh, inspires us every day. She's an amazing mother and a great wife. And that's one of my inspirations that also layers into one of my whys because I want to do it for us to be around for years and years to come that we're, it's non, non, no finish line, right? We're just going to keep on going and we're going to keep on inspiring each other and we're going to keep on plugging through. The other part that inspires me is you guys. And here's the reason why. I wouldn't be doing a podcast and I wouldn't be doing blogs and I wouldn't be doing all these different avenues that I'm really working on if it wasn't for the fact that all kinds of people come to me and tell me that I'm inspirational or I've changed their life or the words that I say kicks their day off and they can go out and do great things and achieve a great accomplishments based on the fact that they listened to me and they got their head right in the right frame of mind and they were able to go do it based on the fact that my voice on this podcast inspires them. I mean, how powerful is that? You know, some people in some of the masses that are out there think the direction that we've gone in with No Finish Line Nation or the direction that we've gone in with um, the different avenues that we've done, whether it's through t-shirt merchandising or whether it's through our podcasts or blogs or whatever it is, is kind of selling out, right? We're going over there to be able to uh, capitalize our merchandise. Let me tell you, I really wish... I really wish that you could just sit on the other end of where we're at with this and really know how inspirational it is every single day when you have people every single day telling you 
that they're inspired by you, they're driven by you, and that they wake up in the morning and they want to be able to hear the words that you have to say to be able to get through their day. Now, that comes with a weight to it too, right? So not only does that inspire me, but it also comes with a lot of responsibility. And the responsibility piece is one of the hardest parts because you still have to come to the table every day and do these kind of things. And some days it's not easy. But the reason that it becomes easy is because I'm inspired by each and every one of you. We have 27,000 people on No Finish Line Nation that are all come together to cheer for each other, hold each other accountable. And what a great place that we've created that we've, it's a safe environment that we're all together to be able to make sure that we are celebrating and being able to lift each other up. So those are some of the things that inspire me. So thank you so much for his BN, you know who you are, at gmail.com. I really appreciate the email and I really appreciate the questions and I'll read some of the other ones when we get down to Boston to be able to ask them the questions too. So those are the only really two emails that I'm going to go through right now. But this is great because I think that this is going to give me some insight and some material that I can actually bring to the table with some questions that you might ask. So continue to keep those questions coming even after Bropocalypse. If you have somebody you want to celebrate, let's say, for instance, you have somebody that inspires you, that you know has lost a bunch of weight or have done different things, and you want to celebrate in that person. You want to say, hey, this person has done this or this person has done that. They inspire me by, for, by doing this. And that way I can bring it right over to the podcast and we can kind of get that word out there just to share in the celebration of who they are and what they've done. Investing in others is three quarters of the game here to make sure that we feel good and we're uh, feeding the soul of where we're at with everything. So thank you so much for joining me today. I think that this podcast was a nice refresher, a nice little telltale that we can actually tell you or show you exactly what the Bropocalypse movement is all about and starting on Thursday is when it all starts. So you'll be able to see some insight on No Finish Line Nation, maybe some live videos, maybe some pictures. You'll see photos of connecting people, connecting with each other on a personal level versus just over internet and clicks and those kind of things. So be on the lookout for all that. And during that time frame, I'm going to probably be taking a little bit of a break on some of the podcasts because I'm going to be doing internal podcasts and little interviews throughout the whole entire process to make sure that we are um, getting some really good material for you guys. So I appreciate all the support. I appreciate all the kind words. And I appreciate all of the folks going in and subscribing and spreading the word about the podcast. Keep it going, right? Keep people moving towards it, either on Podbean that they can download the application or they can find it through iTunes uh, looking for Coffee Talk with Liquid Shano 1973. If you're listening to it already, you know how to get there, but sp spread the word and share that with everybody else. Have an amazing day, everybody, and we'll talk later. Thanks.